Okay, so guys, good evening, everyone. So welcome back. We are going to continue with our Git session. Uh, today is our Git day five session. Today the time, the date is 12th of September and the timing is evening 9.16, sorry, 9.6 uh, p.m. IST. Okay. Guys, in the last session, that is in the day four session, if you see in the day four session, right, we had, uh, uh, I think we we didn't do that much. Like we uh, we tried to understand how the, what are the different types of configuration files. And uh, later we also saw uh, an example of uh, creating a Git learning folder and did some changes. And we played around with some commands. I think that is what we did. Like we hardly did very few things in the last session. So what we're going to do today, we are going to continue with the Git itself. We are going to continue the Git today. Continue Git with uh, many more command. Right, so now guys, so if you see it actually, uh, remember if you go here, if you go to this folder and if you go to this, I have a folder by name Git learning or learning git. This is what like we had created, if you remember, right? So for initially we created a folder with the learning git and then like I did a git in it. So whenever you create a new folder, you have to run a command git in it. So it is going to initialize. So it will make that folder as a repo. So when you do a git in it, you you'll get a dot git uh, folder you're going to get. It's a hidden folder actually. So whenever you see dot git folder, it means that this folder that's here in this case is a learning git. It's, it is nothing but now it's a repo. So whenever you run a git in it, it initializes it and it creates a dot git uh, folder. And this dot git folder will have some information about the repo or about this learning git. So as soon as you dot git, or as soon as you see dot git as a folder, you have to just simply understand that this learning git is no longer a, a normal folder, but now it is a repo. So what is the features of the repo is that one of the feature of the repo is that it always tracks the history. Whatever the changes you do in the files or into the folders, whatever you do the changes, your dot git will maintain a history of it. That is what we needed, right? So, <laughs> so what if you ask me what exactly git does actually? Git basically, it deals always with the inset. So what exactly Git deals means Git always uh, will keep track of changes in the file. It always maintains a change set, we say. Right? It means that whenever a user does any changes, it always keeps track of those changes. Right? So that's what, what happened. Many times we say Git also has a like a content tracker. Right? It it number it, it it tracks all the changes. So so what are the file changes we do, right? It maintains all those files, uh, change sets it maintains. That's what we, so what are the changes in the files you do, right? It maintains it actually. Or even, as I said earlier, Git also called as content tracker. So what is this content tracker is all about? We will see it later, don't worry guys. Okay. Now, what we will do now, so let me one thing. Uh, guys, please always mute, guys. I always request everyone, as soon as you join the call, right, I always uh, request that you please first mute it, actually. Right. Uh, because I, I should take care of muting everyone. So that's the reason. Thank you. Yeah. Now, the thing is, guys, actually, you have created a folder here, actually. Right. You have created a Git, uh, learning Git folder. Let me don't think. Let me open a terminal over here. So if you just do a right click. Open in terminal. So this will this will open a PowerShell actually. Let me increase the size. Okay. Now if I try to run a Git status, let me see what is the status of it. It shows that it's a working tree clean. So this is one of the state of the Git. One of the state. There are many states are there, but one of the state that whenever you run a Git status, if it shows that working tree is clean, it means that there's nothing to be committed. It is, uh, as per the diagram, I think in the last session, I've explained you about this, that you have these three stages now, right? You have these three stages now, right? You have these three stages now like this, right? What are the stages, guys? 
right? What are the changes? This is nothing but your working tree. This is your staging area. Staging tree. Yeah. We will be revisiting this again and again. Why? Right? Because it is required for us to understand in a better way. Staging area. And the, finally, this is nothing but your local tree. Now, whenever you are getting, if you run a command git status and whenever you're getting a working tree clean, it means that actually whatever the state is there in the working tree, the status is same as in a local repo. If these two states are same, it means that it means that the the repo, uh, it means that actually your status, git state is always clean state. So there, there are no file changes. If there are any file changes, if any user is doing any file changes, into this working tree, then when you run the git status, then it will show you some other status. It might show that your file has been modified or it might even show that your file will be an untracked state. Suppose in case if you're creating a new file, then it will show as an untracked state, right? So whenever you're doing any changes in the working tree, then only there is a difference between from here to here, there'll be a difference. That's the reason git status will show that there are some modify or some change that has happened now in the working tree. Now you need to do further process of doing uh, uh, adding uh, to the staging area and finally committing to the local repo, right? So if somebody asks you that if what is the working tree clean means, you have to just say that uh, if the working tree status is as same as the local uh, repo status, if both are same status, nothing to be changed, nothing is there, then it means it's a clean state. That's what you have to say. Is it fine, guys? Now, what we will do now, Mm, now what we'll do we'll uh, we'll do some more changes to this repo so let me don't think guys let me uh, open the uh, i'll just say code dot so that i'll be opening a visual studio code <laughs> right now what i will do now uh, you know that under the src we had a file by name main.py okay let me don't think let me add on something something like this is the this is my uh, main file something Right, this is the changes I've did now. Now we'll go over here and I'll just say git status. Now you could see that actually it is saying that now this file has been modified. Right, now what I will do that. So let me don't think, man, I'll just say, uh, let's uh, create two changes. What are those two changes? First let uh, one change uh, uh, to be done in existing files, that is in this case, uh, I just changed uh, uh, under SRC, I changed this uh, main.py, right? This is what a small change I did, right? And let me don't think, let me uh, create a new file. Let me create a new file. So what I'll be doing here, I will go over here and let me don't think under the SRC only, let me create a file by name uh, something app.py. Clear? I created a app.py. Right? Now, if I come over here and now if I do a git status, so guys, whatever I'm doing now, you have to carefully watch whatever I'm doing so that you'll be able to understand in a better way. So, when I do a git status, you could see that one is in a modified state. And other is in an untracked state. One is in a modified state. So here in this case, in case of a main.py, this is in a modified state. And the newly created one, which I created just now, right, where I created under SRC, I created a file by name. Okay. This is in a untracked state. Do you agree with this statement? Right. So now what, what do you mean by untracked state? Actually, modified is something like where already a file exists. Okay. It has been uh, uh, like it has been already been committed. It uh, this main dot of uh, main dot py, py file is already uh, it's already been tracked. Uh, and it also there is a history behind that. That's what happened, right? It is still showing as in a modified state. It is showing as a modified state. Whereas now, recently I created a file by name app.py, which is a new file actually. And it will be in an untracked file state. It means that right now your Git 
will represent this as a new file only, right? And why it is it is called as an untracked file? Because this app.py is not part of a history or it is not part of any kind of a comment. It is newly been created, right? So let me write down what is done by untracked, guys. Untracked file in Git. Uh, in Git status uh, represents a new file and which was never part of history or commit, I can say. Correct? Right? Now, now what is happening that here, guys, what you have to do that here, the thing is that actually that now, when I do a git status, it will show both the status, like one is in untracked and other is in a modified state. And you have to remember always, guys, whenever anything which is showing a red color, it means that that file is in a working tree. So whenever you see, when you see, when you see the file status in a red color, it means, it means that the files are in working area or working tree. This is a simple way of you to understand it. Now what happened, right? Let's add. Now let's add. Let us add all the changes. Now to do uh, to add all the changes, you have to run a git add command. If you say dot, it will be added everything. It means that if you go over here and if I say git add, dot it will add all the things it means that both these files will get added to the staging area so whenever you run a git add here git add command these files will be shifted to the staging area right so it means that it will be shifted to the staging area but you know that these are the two files are there so you can either use a git add dot means in the present working area dot means in the present working entry whether a file is in a modified state or whether the file in an untracked state everything should be added into the staging area then you can do a git add or else there is one, one uh, the command is there in the last class if you remember uh, you did the git add space hyphen hyphen all or you can even run a command with git add space hyphen capital a anything can do what is the small difference between these two? These two are almost same, but git add dot, it means that you should be under the parent directory. So where I'm under, I am under learning git parent directory. I'm under the top of this directory. I'm under this folder, learning git. So when I do a git add, everything, all these files files will be pushed to the staging area. <laughs> will be pushed to the staging area. Say for example, if I go here, under the, if I go CD to the docs, I'm going to this folder, right? So I'm not under, I'm uh, under the learning git, uh, uh, CD docs is there. Now, if I do a git status, right? It is showing you all the changes, but if I do a git add here and the dot, because I have not did any changes into the docs directory. If I do a git docs, git add dot, nothing is there. If I do a git status, you will see that still nothing has been pushed to the staging here. Still it is there in the red color only. It means that when you do the git add under the docs, because under the docs, no, no files have been changed, it will not push into the staging area. Suppose you say that, Rajesh, should I always be under the uh, top folder only? No, you, you can be in anywhere. Suppose you want to add all the changes, then you can do a git add hyphen fn all. Or else git dot hyphen fn. Now you see that when I do a git add hyphen fn all, and now you execute the command git status, can you see that now the files have been moved into your staging area? You understood, guys? I'm inside any folder. I'm not at the root folders or I'm not on the learning gate. You can run or you can add or you can push the code changes or file changes from working to the local uh, to the staging area by using a git add hyphen fn all. Or you can do, you can execute a command git space add hyphen a. Right? Now it has been moved to the staging area. Uh, staging area. Right <clears throat> now, I'll come back from the uh, docs folder. I am under the root folder itself. That is nothing but the learning gits. Now, if you run a git status, it will show that both these files are in a green color. See, whenever the file are in a green color, it means that that for those files are in staging area. So, whenever you see file in a red color, now these files are in a 
green color. Now, all the files, files are in green color. So green color means it, it those files are under the scaling area. It's something an analogy. Uh, I use the I use an example of your uh, uh, like uh, unorganized uh, your unorganized books, right? So initially in your shelf you had an unorganized book. Later what you did that you took all the books you put in a carton box, an open carton box. So that open ta carton box where you put all the uh, books, right? That is nothing but the staging area. Something like. That. Later you need to pack that uh, uncarton box. You need to seal it. You need to fold it. You need to seal it. And you need to just uh, attach a label onto it, right? When you once you seal it and once you put an attachment, it means that you are pushing that carton box or those files into the local repo. So local repo is something like a where you have a carton box sealed, packed with the plastic, and on top of it, some label has been pasted onto it, right? That is what we call the local repo, right? Did you understood, guys? Now what I will do that I am going to do a commit now. Git commit hyphen m uh added uh, i will do one thing because i added this app.py right let me uh, give the comment uh, commit uh, message with the name added uh, uh, app.py file something like that so that we'll get to know so guys before commit if i do a git log you could see that in the last session we had committed only one commit we did what we give a message created a basic folder structure that is a commit message which i gave now when i try to do a git commit hyphen m uh, added uh, app.py uh, uh, added, I can just say src add app.py file like that. Sort. See, now you could see that you have committed it. This is the second commit. So when I do a git log, you could see that actually that now you could see that you have it, you got a new commit now. This is a new commit ID, right? Now you could see that you will get all uh, kind of uh, messages here saying that who is the author who pushed the code changes, when it was to do the changes, and the message, whatever the message you're giving here, the same message you can able to see over here. Am I clear, sir? Now when I try to, let me clear the screen and uh, let me do a git status. Now check the status. Now it says that it's a clean, working tree clean. Mean that there is nothing, there are no file changes, nothing to be committed, everything is Perfectly fine. Now, the thing is that, guys, if you remember, I told that under this learning git, there is something like a dot git folder is there. This dot git folder was created when you initialize it by executing the git init command, right? We use this git init command at the very initial, right? After creating a new folder, when you create a new folder, you need to run a command as a git init. So it will make that folder, make that folder into a repo. Right, and you will get a, a folder. You'll get a directory, or you'll get a something like a dot git folder. You're going to get. So this dot git folder will maintain the history. It maintain the history. So now, if you go back here in the diagram, right, you have now you have a folder by name dot. Now this dot git guys, it always maintain information about your, it maintain information, always it maintains information about your staging area and your local repo. Dot git doesn't maintain information about working tree. Working tree is something like user is doing changes in here. He's sitting in his folder and he's doing. So dot, dot git will not maintain this information. It always maintain a, information about the staging area and the local repo. This is very important. You need to keep it in your mind. It means that the dot git folder will maintain a reference information about the staging area and the local. What it does, guys, it maintains or it manages or I can say that it maintains. It maintains or manages the reference to staging area and very important, you should keep in your mind. Clear, guys? You have to keep in mind always. Clear? Sounds interesting? Yeah, yes, sir. 
very good okay very good so we have already viewed the history right we how to review the history you have to just say git log it will show you the commits so now you could see this is the latest commit we are having and this is the big commit id like some big number right you say that rajesh i want to shorten all this information i don't want to see all these things so you can just say git log a hyphen fn one line if you execute this command it will show in a shorter way the first five or six character of the commit id only it will show it like this now you could see that now there is something like a header head is actually pointing to your latest commit id it means that whatever the latest you have committed that is nothing but it is pointing apart from this you, you are seeing something like a master right now you uh, ignore it uh, i will explain about this master in some time or be, uh, i think at the end of our session i will be coming across this what exactly master is all about but right now just ignore it now just you think that there is something like a head is there which is actually pointing to your or it is actually <laughs> pointing to your latest right now, guys, this uh, commit ID will maintain information about who did the commit, like uh, who did the commit, when the commit was done, who was author who did the commit, all those information this commit ID maintains. If you remember, I had execute on command something like a cat hyphen file hyphen p and give this commit ID. I will not be discussing everything uh, now with this command. Just I'm telling you that if you run it, it will show you that what is a tree. Who is a parent? Who is an author? Who is a committer? And this is the file which has been added. Uh, this is the commit message. You could see that this is managing a tree actually. So if again, if I try to copy this one, and if I try to do a git cat of file hyphen p, again, if I try to give this commit ID, right, and paste it like this, now you could see that it is showing you something. Oh, okay, read me docs. Oh, it means that actually it is showing me all the file system information oh i have a docs i have src i have a readme okay just do this what is this again you do a, a, a git cat of hyphen pi so we will come across with all these things later guys just try to understand what i'm doing now now if you try to copy this and try to run it oh rajesh it means that this readme file what are the content you are having now under the readme file right this content this is what it is showing you at the end right see to be written now, if you go here, uh, if you uh, if you go here, and if you go to the readme, can you see that this is a message? This is what the text I have written, right? The same thing can you see over here, right? See, to be written. So it means that when you try to dig and dig uh, the commit IDs, you're going to exactly get the information about what exactly there, the text is there in that file or in that folder. So here you could see that when I did git cat, it is showing you that this is there, this is there, this is there. If you try to even dig this one, So now what is, what exactly you're understanding that? See, this is a, what the information does. I think I didn't properly copy it. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I give the same thing. I think I didn't copy it properly. Uh, sir, do we need to copy the entire commit ID or just four numbers? Is any option? Anything, sir. Anything, sir. You can even copy completely or I'll just do this one. Four or five characters. This much is also fine. Okay. Yeah. It'll show you. See? So under your, under this commit ID, under this commit ID, there is something like a design.md there. Right? So where is the design.md? See? Under this doc, sir. This. So it means that basically what you can... What you understand very carefully, or what you understand that Git is something like a, it's like a tool which is designed by the Linux servers, which is something like it is a content tracker. It's a content tracker. It maintains, it tracks some information. It tracks the, it tracks the change set actually. It tracks the change set, and Git internally has its own file system. Oh, okay, some storage is there, some file system is involved in that, that's all. So there are two important components are there in the Git. If you see the design aspect of the Git, what Linux store is design, one is he's managing the content tracker and other is a file system. This is what we have to understand in our upcoming sessions. We will be seeing all those things, right? How exactly it manages, how it exactly it, it, it manages the content tracker, how we are saying content tracker, because there is something, a concept by name we call as a references. 
So I'll be coming across with what exactly Git references is later after some point of, uh, point of time, as well as what exactly a story is all about. What is this blob storage? Okay, what kind of story is it actually? How it manages this file system storage? Everything we'll be discussing in our upcoming. That is something like a, if you want to internally get inside the Git and try to understand how Git internally works, that's what we'll be seeing. That we will be seeing it later after some point of time. Is it clear, guys? Sir, the commit message is the same for the two different commits. Maybe it will be uh, like any confusion will be happen or uh, how can you work? Any option is there? This one you are saying a hyphen name option like that you are yeah, saying. Like, yeah, yeah. No, you sir. Whenever you are coming, whenever you are committing, sir, you need to give a as a as you being an author of the file, you are doing changes. You need to give a appropriate message. You need to give what what exactly you are doing it. So to be, uh, now you have did a changes in app.py. Did the changes in app.py. Or suppose that you removed some lines, remove some files, some lines, line number four to line number six in from the app.py. So like that, a valid, uh, you know, you need to manage, you need to uh, pass a valid message whenever you're doing committing. That is something like a label. It's something like a label. If you do a git status, uh, sorry, if you do a git log, this is nothing but this is nothing but the labels are actually. This is up to the user. He has to always give a valid message while when he's committing it. Actually. Is it clear? So now if you do a Doubt. log. Here yes. log, log refer, uh, mean representing today's only, right? For example, yesterday's commit log didn't, uh, you know, display yeah, it's there, no, sir. Yeah, see, September 10th, two days back, and today's September 12th. Okay, okay. it represents a particular folder. Okay, no, these are the informations where this commit ID okay. it has all this information, sir. Okay. If you try to do again cat hyphen file hyphen p again, you dig inside it, it will take you inside what exactly it contains. This commit ID contains okay. So, okay. this is nothing but SHA. Sha, you I told you, no, Sha 256. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. It converts it actually. It mean, uh, right. It converts into an SHA. So uh, SHA SHA two fifty. Why it is doing again? I will be when I am explaining about in detail about how exactly internally Git works. Right. There you'll get a complete understanding. Actually. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. Now, now you'll understand that Rajesh. Uh, now, whenever you are learning the Git, actually, always you need to uh, you need to draw some kind of a tree view like this. I think in the last session also showed you. Right. You have to always map something like a tree view. Uh, you also should always say that, oh, whenever you're doing anything in the Git, actually, oh, how things are happening, you need to view in a tree structure, actually, right? Say, for example, like here, in this case, actually, first you had this one commit ID, right? Uh, uh, one commit ID we had, actually, right? Uh, what is it, guys? Actually, uh, uh, according to this message, actually, this was the commit ID. Initially, this was the uh, commit it was there, actually. The first commit it was there, right? Right. Let me don't think. Let me uh, move this here. Uh, right, like this. And this is what the committed it had actually. Right. This was the commit. This is a commit ID for that. This is for the first commit. Now what is happening that now you did a latest commit now. You did a latest commit now. Right? Now this latest commit has this commit ID. Right? This has a latest commit ID. Right? Now what is happening that your actually your header is actually pointing to your latest commit ID. Your head. Now can you see here? This is nothing but your header. is actually pointing to the latest commit ID. Later, if you want, you can move this header. You can move this header. You remember in the last session we did, right? We can move this head from here to here. We can move anytime you can move head like this. How you can move from here to here? You have to just to use that git checkout command. Git checkout and give that commit ID. 
you can move anywhere. Your head can be moved anywhere. Is it clear? So, but this is not the correct way, but still, yeah, you can use this actually. Is it clear, guys? Now, okay, right now it is pointing here. Let it be like this one, right? Let it be. What is it, guys? Now let it be pointing to this only. Let us commit, right? <clears throat> so here it was there. Now the head is pointed. So here this is all. Now, now let us do one thing. Now what I will do here? Now let me do one thing, guys. Very good. Now let us play around some more things now. Very good. Now what we'll do that? Uh, Rajesh, I'll do one thing, Rajesh. I will. Uh... Uh, Rajesh. Yes, sir. Uh... So the git log shows the some information. So is this information uh, gets stored somewhere and from there it's getting written here when we do a git log. Yes, very good, sir. Now what happened at whatever you're doing, all the information about the file set changes, everything will be done under the dot git folder. Okay, okay. When you're doing a git log or anything, no, it is actually checking from this dot git folder and it is displaying. It. If you lose this directory, if you remove this directory, then you're losing the repo itself. It means that no track, no history, nothing. Everything will be removed, sir. That's what people say that don't touch, don't touch this dot .git folder unless and until you are not aware of. If you get inside the dot .git folder, you will see that hooks is there, info, logs, object, references. See, reference, head is there. Where head is pointing to? See, head is pointing to the master. So all these things will be discussing in some time later or tomorrow in next class, we'll be discussing about all these things. Okay, good. Now what we'll do, guys? Uh, I don't think like uh, let me. Uh, I don't think uh, I'll go to this uh, dot. I'll go to this here. Uh, I will open. Uh, show more. Let me open uh, Git Bash here. I'll show open here. Right. So I'm under your learning Git. Now what I will do here? Let me don't think. Let me. Uh, if I do an ls, I have a docs actually. Let me do. Let me create a directory. MKDR docs. Uh, uh, guys, what I'm doing right? Right here, I am under the learning git. I just opened a git bash. How I did it? I just do a right click here. I have already installed the git right. So if I go to the show more options, you will see that git bash here is there. Open git bash. Click on it. It has opened it. Now if you say pwd, you could see that you are under that learning git folder, right? Here, we are under learning folder. What I'm doing right now that I'm just doing a MKDR. Uh, you know that there's a docs is there, right? You have a docs folder. Under that, let me do thing. Let me create one, some more folder, something. I will uh, give some name like design and say enter. So now you could see that under the doc, you're able to create one folder by name design. Is it clear, guys? So what I'm doing now that Let me create a new folder under docs, uh, under docs, under docs as a design. Right. Now, after doing the changes, see, after creating a folder, now if I try to do a git status, it's not showing anything. There's no changes. You just created a folder, right? You just created a folder. Now, what happened, guys? Git. Uh, will always identify the changes with respect to only to the files. If you have created any empty folder, right? Git will not uh, do or Git will not identify those changes as uh, those changes if there are folders actually, right? So what I have to, did you understand what I said that? Whenever you create a folder, Git will not identify any kind of a changes with respect to folder. If there's any files are there, if you have created a new file, or a, a empty file or a new file or you have added an, any new cont uh, any content to the file then only git will keep a track of changes only to the file not for a folder now you could see that actually now all i created a folder under the doc as a design still if i try to run a git status it is not showing any changes at all right it's only so now what happened right i'll just let me write it git identified changes identifies changes with respect to files, not folders. 
empty folder is not a change in git. This is what you have to keep in mind. So we can clear guys. Okay, now what we will do that? Let me do one thing. Let me uh, what we'll do now, like let me uh, have some files or folders actually. So we can uh, what I'm trying to do now that uh, let me do one thing. Let me configure. We can configure it to ignore some files. Some files or folders. Some files or folders. What do you mean by that? Suppose, for example, suppose assume that actually you have some files are there where the Git shouldn't keep track of those files. Right? Where the Git shouldn't keep track of those files. Then what happened, right? There is a way to ignore some files, actually. How to do that? We will see. Now, let us do one thing, guys. Let me, uh, let me uh, create a file now under the, uh, where is it, guys? Under your docs, I have created a design folder, right? Here, under the design folder, let me don't think, let me create a file, something. I'll just create a file by name test.txt. So I create a file, right? Under this uh, folder, I created a test.exe. Now I'll go here and I'll just do a git status. Now you could see that. Now it's saying that uh, there is a file under docs design, which is nothing but your text uh, test.exe. It is under the untracked file. Now you could see that now the git has understood, okay, there's a file. Now it is showing you the changes actually. Earlier what happened? It was showing clean because now git was not considered a folder, right? Uh, git will never... Uh, you know, like uh, uh, Git will never do any kind of a changes onto the folder, right? Empty folder. It will not recognize as a change. It only recognizes if there is any file uh, there, right? Correct, guys. Did you agree with me? So now what I will do now, guys. Now in, in my case, I'm having a file by text.txt, right? But what happened, right? If I try, if this file is there, I don't want to keep a track of this file. It means that actually it has to be get ignored. Say, for example, I'll take an example. You know about uh, the Java applications, right? Like, uh, say, for example, if you're building any Java applications, uh, right, uh, you will be, uh, say, for example, let me give an example of here. Uh, if I go to the GitHub, uh, there is one uh, uh, small project is there by name Spring Pet Clinic. Now, this is Spring Pet Clinic is there. Okay, this is the whole Java code, guys, actually. This is a whole Java code. And you could see that there is a palm.xml is there. There's an mvn.cmd is there. There's a mini are there. And there is also SRC is there. Under that SRC, you have all the source files of your pet dot, uh, spring pet clinic. Now the thing is that actually, guys, now, so you are having a spring pet, spring pet clinic folder, actually. Spring pet clinic Java folder is there now so this spring pet clinic guys now you want to uh, this is the source you are having because you are having something like src folder is there form.xml is there so there are many files are there now the thing is that if you have installed the maven build tool right you will get a mvn command and if you run a mvn command say mvn package we will be learning all these things when we learn in the jenkins now, what this Maven package will do that Maven package MVN command will try to refer to this pom.xml file. And finally, what happened, right? It it does a compiling, it does a testing, and then finally what happened in the same folder structure, it is going to create one new folder by name target. Under this target folder, you will be having a file, something like a uh, spring pet clinic dot R file or you will have a dot var file any type of file version you can create it based on the pom.xml it'll create it now the thing is that what i'm trying to tell over here that all on fly when you're running the mvn package it has created a target folder under the target folder it has placed the jar or var file uh post uh no compilation it has created it now the thing is that guys this has created on fly now, Git, when you're managing everything to the Git, now why Git has to maintain the target information or target folder? 
target folder has to be ignored, right? Because target was created on fly, right? So whenever the whenever you are trying to do something like compute uh, or uh, something, you're running some command as a part of execution, if you're getting some output of the file or a data, right, that should be ignored by your Git. Git shouldn't consider that. Right. So like that, there are many files are there, guys, where the Git has to be ignored. Git has to ignore it. Now, how we are going to make sure that Git has to ignore such files? Right. When I do a Git status, it is showing me that, okay, there's file change there. If I do a Git add and it's, it's a Git commit, whatever that uh, text file is there, no? T uh, test.txe, this file will be pushed uh, into a local repo. But I don't want to push this such files in local repo. Then in that case, guys, you need to create a file by name dot Git ignore file. So where you have to create, you have to create under top of your folder. So learning it is your top of a folder. Under that, you need to create one file by name dot git ignore. So what is it, guys? So we need to, we need, you can configure git to ignore some file or a folders. To do this, we need to create a file called as dot git ignore in the root folder under the root folder of the repository clear so now what i will do that i will go over here in my visual studio code uh, just click on here uh, right and then try to create a file so uh, i think it is still showing over here i'll click on this and i'll try to do here yeah now it is saying dot hit ignore Right, dot git ignore. This is a file you have created. Now, what you have to do that, Rajesh, under the docs, under design, you have the text.txt. This has to be ignored. Yeah. What you have to give the full path. Docs under that design. D S I G N. Under that, there's a text.txt. This has to be ignored. Now you have created it. Now you go here and you try to do a git status. Can you see here, guys? It has been ignored. So earlier, what happened when I did a git status, it was showing that under docs design, there is some file is there, like some that is test.txe, that is under untracked state. Now you could see that now it has been not been tracked at all. So this test.txe file has not been tracked at all. Okay, you'll do one thing, Rajesh. Uh, this test.txe is there fine, but under the docs, under the docs, there is a design which is there. Under the docs itself, let me create one more file. Uh, by name, uh, same file, test.txt. Oh man, where it has created, man. Under the docs, I have to move here. Right? Uh, God. I'll go here. I'll do one thing. I'll, uh, this is not the correct way. Uh, under the docs, right? Uh, <sighs> Yeah, it's correct only. Yes, under the docs, it has a test.txt is there, right? Now, if I go over here, uh, all right, now what I have to do here, I have to go to the ignore, uh, dot ignore, then I have to say that under the docs, there is a test.txt file. This has to get ignored, right? So go here and then do a git status. Now it gives that it has been ignored. So now you are having two files now, right? What are those two files? Under test.txt, one under the this path and other is the disk path. I'll do one thing. Let me create one more file here under the readme under your main folder itself. Let me do one thing. Let me create one more file. Same file under the under your root folder test.txt. Right now, if I'm not adding into the ignore file now, if you go here and if you do a git status, it will show you that there is one file is a test.txt under root. Now I need to ignore this. So now what you have to do, guys? You have to go over here. Go to ignore and just add the stock text. Now you come back here and you try to do a git status. Now you could see that actually it has been ignored. So guys, did you understood what I did till here? So it means that whenever you want to ignore any files, which shouldn't be a part of your git history or which shouldn't be a part of your repo, then what is happening that you need to create a file by name dot ignore file dot git ignore file that should be under your root folder. You, you cannot keep this for file under the docs or under the SRC. No, it should be outside. It should be under the root folder and then add the 
all the path actually. This is all fine. Okay. Now you say that Rajesh, I'm doing so many things, man. Why I'm adding this? There is there any regular expression there? Yeah, man. There's a regular expression. Star star. Under any folder, wherever you find .txt file, yeah, ignore that. See, remove this. Now come over here. Now again do a git status. See, now it's in there. See, you can use such a regular expression. Star star means under any folder. Like under the docs, you have a text dot a test a text dot .dt. Under docs design again you have so star star means folder folder under folder to folder wherever you are finding dot txt, please ignore it. Right? This you will, say that this uh, will scan uh, only two directories inside uh, two directories or... even in your uh, main also here also this is a regular expression you have to understand even under the learning git right you are having test dot txt right even that is also getting ignored. Right. Say, for example, under a design.txt uh, here, uh, or else uh, under the SRC, under SRC, under this, let me create one file. What is that? Uh, something app.txt. Even that should be ignored. We were ignoring only test.txt. Now app.txt should also get ignored. Now what you will do that? You can go, you can add like this. Right. Or else what you can do that, why you have to do, man, any file which is having a .txt extension, everything should be ignored. See, star.txt. So, test.txt will also be ignored. App.txt also will be ignored. Right? Go here and just say, get status. Everything will be ignored. Am I clear, sir? Did yes, you understood? Sir. I got it. Very good. Sir, anyone having any confusion in this? So, now the thing is that guys, now you might have a question now, uh, Rajesh, why we need a dot git ignored? Okay, you said that there are some files are there. Guys, what happened now, whenever you're working on any, uh, in in uh, the software development, right? Whenever a developer is working on the software development, there are many unnecessary files will get created. Cache files will get created, uh, you know, like some kind of uh, like uh, logs files will get created. I don't want to be the part of the git repo. Then you need to ignore it actually. So what happened, right? Usually what happened, whenever a developer is working on any project, he will be using some editors. That editors also, like ID editors, like for example, Visual Studio Code, Java Eclipse, that editor also will generate many files and many folder itself. Even those also should get ignored. So in that case, guys, what you have to do that actually that, in that case, what you have to do? You have to call a uh, create a dot ignore dot get ignore and you need to add all those which has to get ignored right now let us see now okay we will come in some time about that uh like if i do a git status now you say that rajesh this is the file uh, which is the which is a new file which has got created that has all those uh, details whatever you mentioned over here uh, okay let me don't think let me add on man like let me add that now what i'll do i'll just say git add this time i'll do hyphen a option I can even use a git dot, add dot also. Let me add, use hyphen A option. Now, if I do a git status, now you could see that now it has been into a staging area. Now, what I will do that, I'm going to commit it. What is the commit message I'll view? I'll just git commit hyphen M uh, added ignore dot added dot git ignore file. This is what I'm saying. You have to give valid message whenever. If anyone sees it, they'll get to know. Now the guys, now what happened? This is my third commit. So enter. Now if you do a git log, can you see that? Now this is a third commit. Your head is actually pointing to a latest commit. And this is the commit message. Whatever you're given, right? The same commit message is there. Or else you can run a git log hyphen one line. You will get in a simplified way. Right now, the thing is that guys, actually, as I said earlier, that there are many tools are there where a developer will be using like ID tools for the development activity. Like even as a DevOps engineer, we'll be using Visual Studio Code also. Visual Studio Code itself will create so many unnecessary files on a directory when you're working on it. And, and all those files and directories will be created inside a repo itself, inside the folder only. Like here in this case, we are using a learning gate as a folder, right? If I'm part of the learning gate, if I'm doing anything, say for example, I'm using a Visual Studio Code 
and I am developing some Terraform files or so I am developing a Terraform. While uh, while when you are trying to do it, do you remember when you are trying to, so if somebody might, some, some of you might know that, when you're working on a Terraform file, Terraform uh, project actually, where you're creating a lot of .tf files, you know that when you're trying to do a Terraform apply, Terraform apply will also create a Terraform.tf state file. Do you remember? It will create it. So do you think that this has to be committed? This has to go under repo? No, we should ignore this, ignore such file. Similarly, your Visual Studio code will also, this tool also will create so many files, so many files or directories or folders will create. All have to be ignored. Then in that case, guys, we need a dot .git, dot .git ignore file. Ignore file is required. Now the thing is that guys, uh, Rajesh, then how I will know like which are all the files which it is uh, doing. Say for example, in this case, you said, okay, you give an example of uh, the uh, the Java application where, you know, target file, uh, target folder is getting created. Yeah, that we know, right? Uh, like that actually. So what you have to do guys, actually, basically, you have to just uh, go to the Google and just search for something known as a git ignore online. Right, so you could see that this is a very good website, guys, uh, toptal.com. If you click on this, right here, what happened, right? Now, the thing is that actually, guys, now you'll know that, okay, Rajesh, I'm using a Visual Studio Code as a developed, uh, as a developed here, Visual Studio Code, and I'm developing a Terraform uh, project, actually. I'm using a Terraform. Now, when I try to run it, now you could see that, see, what are the files it has to get ignored, everything, see? Under Terra, dot Terraform has to get credit. See, dot TF state file. Has to be ignored so what you can do that you can nicely copy this whole content like this copy it go to your uh, this one go to your ignore and just paste it like this that's all see even your visual studio code see all these files will be ignored actually these are all internal files of your visual studio code same thing guys now tomorrow you are saying that rajesh i'm working on a project where uh, i'm using a pie charm what I'm using a PyCharm. PyCharm. See, PyCharm. And I'm using a Python coding. And there are many files, unnecessary files or folders will get created by the PyCharm uh, editor as well as your Python also. So, you can see, these are all the files. Can you see here? Star, star. Something like ID, idea is getting created. And under star, star, under that workspace.xml, task. All this has to be ignored, guys. See, all this. So you can, you have to do the same thing. Copy the whole stuff, paste it, go and paste it in your dot ignore dot .txt. Yeah, sorry, dot uh, git ignore file. Now, why we are doing again, and when we have to do it, we have to do at the very beginning during the development act, when you are developing, when a developer is developing at the very initial stage, only he has to do that. Otherwise, later, if many of the files, if it becomes a part of the repo, it is very difficult to remove it. That's the reason you will see the developer, as soon as he create a folder, he'll also create a file. He will, uh, first he'll create a folder. He will do a git in it so that he'll make it as a repo. Then immediately he will create a dot git ignore file, ignore file, and he will go to add on all the things which has to be ignored. He will do at the very initial stage. If you're doing in between, if you're doing later, then it will become very difficult. Did you understood guys what are I said till now? Right? Same thing if a developer is working on a .NET code, right? So dot net code. Oh, sorry. No, it is not showing dot net code or else dot uh, net code. Yeah, this is what. If anybody is developing dot net code, so these are the ignore files. This, are, this has to be ignored. Can you see here? B -N -J, bin, OBJ has to be ignored. Right? If suppose somebody is working on a Maven, Maven tool, Maven, see, Maven, right? See, Maven, you could see target fold has to be ignored. Pom.xml.tag, all this has to be ignored. Eclipse course, dot project has to be ignored, dot plus, everything has to be ignored. Is it fine, guys? Did you understood till here? I hope that you understood whatever I said till now. Baban, any doubts you have, Jagdish? No, sir.
Sounds interesting? Yes. Okay, now to create <clears throat> ignore based this is one important question guys very important many interviews they'll ask this what is the dot ignore file why we use it you should be able to tell everything what i told till now uh, uh to create ignore based on the tools and languages so l a n g u a s languages refer to below link This is a link you have to follow it. There are many links are there, but this is what I feel like it's good actually. So now come back here. Create a uh, git ignore files for the following combinations. For the Java guys, always when you're working on a Java project, okay, you will be having a, a ID uh, which will be nothing but your uh, Eclipse actually, E C L I P S C like this. You need to always search for this like this. You have to go to this link and just say E C L I C like this. You have to give right. And uh, apart from that, uh, because it's Java, you'll be using Maven also. Both you have to give it and you have to just say create it. So whatever it will show, not everything you have to copy paste like that. You have to do. So you understood what I said, right? For Java, always you have to do that because this is our work, DevOps work, right? And the build tool is something like you'll be using Maven tool. Then in that case, guys, you have to give this keyword Eclipse and, uh, and Maven actually. Same thing with your .NET Core. .NET Core, right? Uh, the ID, what you will be using is a Visual Studio. Visual Studio. Right. Uh, for example, for the React.js, Right. Uh, I think you'll be using ID as uh, Visual Studio Code only. Remember, Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code, these are the two different things, guys. Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio is only particular to your .NET, whereas the Visual Studio Code, it is for every language. Right. Same thing, what happened, right? For uh, in case of a Terraform, we'll again use a Terraform also. Terraform also. Uh, we use a ID as a um, Visual Studio Code only. Same thing will be so. But you can even give the search even uh, apart from that. You can even give the as uh, search for even for Terraform also, like that. And uh, I think same with Ansible also. Okay, if you're working on Ansible, same thing. Add events. Like that, you can see this ID. Okay, guys. Okay. Which is true. Okay, guys. Now, okay. Uh, guys, I like to continue today for a little bit longer time. So is it fine if I continue up to 11 o'clock? Because I have to cover many things. So we it's 11, 10, 5. I will take up to 11 today. Is it fine with everyone? Because I have to cover many things. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Thank you. Now, now we'll do some exercise, guys. Now, what we'll do that? Let us do one thing, something like I need to move the changes. From staging area to working tree. It is something like a reverse. You say that Rajesh, from the working area, you have did a add actually, git add, you have did it. Right. And those those all those changes are there in the staging area. But I don't want to, I don't want to keep a stage, I want to revert it back. Or I want to restore it back. Or I want to move back the changes. So it is an opposite actually. Opposite of add is restore. 
right so i have to do that actually and also right that's what we have to do right how to do that actually how to do that okay uh, let me do the thing, guys. I already have this main.p, uh, app.txt, text.txt. A lot of these files are there. Let me do the thing. Let me. Uh, uh, hold a second. Doesn't work, right? Don't worry about this command. What I'm doing, right? We'll be eventually be learning all these commands. Okay. Why it didn't remove man? Okay, I'll do one thing. I'll go here. I'll manually remove it actually. I don't want to scan. Uh, I don't want these files actually. I'll delete this. I will delete the app.txt. Uh, I will delete the text.txt. I think under docs also you have somewhere, right? This is also there. I'll delete even this also. I don't want any of these .txt files, right? So let me cross verify. Uh, okay, under docs, design, and under design, there's no, okay, fine. Under the SRC also, there is no dot. Yeah, perfectly fine. I removed it manually, but it should work actually. When I try to do a git reset hyphen fnr, it should work, but not sure for some reason it is not working. Okay, that's fine. Okay, we will see it later why it is not working. So now what I'm going to do now, guys, we will do a small examples now. Now, for example, under the SRC, you have app.py is there. Let me add some code actually, right? Uh, and let me check the git status first initially. Now, when I do a git status, so nothing is there, everything is in a clean state. Okay, fine, good. Now I, I'll do one thing under SRC, you have app.py. Let me do one thing, let me add on some code actually. So don't worry about this code. Okay, I'll just say pass. Dev add. This is a Python code. Don't worry. Okay. This is what the changes I did. Okay, oh, here. And under the main.py, I'll do one thing, I'll do, I'll try to do some things here. Dev Nation start uh, pass. Okay, and let me add even also def uh, stop and pass. Pass is something like you want to pass some instruction. You don't want to, you want to ignore some instructions inside its uh, you know, function. Then you can call it a pass actually. Right. So these are the two file changes which are under SRC. I update these two changes. Now, if you go over here and if I do a git status. You see that it is saying that actually these two files are modified. It means that still it is in a working uh, tree only. So both the changes, what you did, it's still in the working tree only. But what you did right here, it is in a modified state. It's in a modified state. Now the thing is that, guys, what you are going to do now, like right? you are going to uh, do a git add dot actually, right? I mistakenly did a git add dot, right? And when I do a git status, now you put here both are in your staging area. Now the thing is that when you try to do a git add dot, both these files have been pushed into the staging area, right? Now the thing is that now you realize that, okay, whatever I did in a SRC app.py, that shouldn't have been pushed actually. So whatever the code changes, which I did here in the app.py, okay, I shouldn't have did the code. This is, there is something wrong in this actually. I shouldn't have pushed it. It means that I need to restore back or it means I need to revert back the changes, right? Then what you're going to do that? You're going to go here. Now, if you do a git status, you know that both are in the staging area. You say that Rajesh, from the staging area, I don't want, I don't want this app.py to be under the staging area. I want to restore back or I want to remove the changes. Then in that case, what you are going to do that, you are going to come over here, right? Let me clear the screen. I'll just again do a git status. Now I'll do one thing. I'll run a command. So git restore hyphen fn staged. 
space, you have to give the complete path. SRC slash app PY. SRC slash app PY. Enter. Now you say git status. Now you could see that, guys, these files which were there under staging, now it has come back to the working tree. Am I clear on this, sir? Am I clear? Now, when you're trying to do a git status here itself, it is giving some information. Git restore uh, hyphen fn stage, give that file name to unstage it, like that it's saying. It. So whenever you want to unstage it, you have to give the git restore hyphen fn stage. The same thing I'm using, git restore space hyphen fn stage, give the complete path of that file, right? SRC app dot. Is it fine, guys? Now you'll say that, Rajesh, I have did this, but I want to commit uh, these changes. Whatever is in the SRC main.py, I want to do that changes. Okay, let it be. Let me do not Let me commit it now. Let me commit hyphen M. What I'll do that, uh, add it. Uh, what is that? Start and stop uh, uh, def definitions in main.py file or in SRC main.py. This is what the valid information you need to give while committing it. Guys, this is my fourth commit, right? When I say enter, it has been committed. Now, when I do a git status, till you will see that this file is in a modified, uh, this is in a modified. It means that even you see the red color, it means that this file is there in our, in your working tree. It means that here, what you did here, when you're trying to do for the first time add, both app.py and the main.py, you into the staging area, right? You push in staging area. Later, you realize that, okay, Rajesh, I want to restore back this app.py. So what you did, like, you restored back. What you use the command? You use a command known as a restore space hyphen fn page space src space app.py. So once you restored it back with this command, what happened, right? This app.py, it came back to your working tree, actually. Right, so that's the reason it is showing you in a red color. Now, what you did, right? After later, what you did, right here, what you did as per the diagram, you now you try to do a commit now. So what you committed now, because this main dot is main dot py is in a staging area. Now, when you committed, now what is happening? This only this main dot py has been pushed to your local. Record. But still what happened, right? If you do a git status, still it will be showing that app.py is still in your in your working area, right? And if you come over here, and if you try to just do a git log or git log, you could see that actually you have did one first commit, second commit, third commit, and a fourth commit. This is the fourth commit you did, and you could see that actually this is nothing but your commit ID. And you could see that the head is actually pointing to your latest commit ID. Is it clear, guys? Did you understood what are you did till now? Git log hyphen fn one line. See, this, these are the four commits are there. Now, if you see the diagram, like this. Like this. Yes, these are the four commits. So this was the first commit. So as per this one, this is the first commit actually. Right? So this is my first commit. Right? And this is my second commit. And this is my third commit. And finally, this is my fourth commit. This is my fourth commit. From here to here, I went again from here to here, the commit has been committed and from here to here.
Now what is happening that now your head is actually pointing to your latest screen. Guys, you have to learn uh, the Git through this way only. This we call a tree view. It means that you can either take your paper and pen and you have to draw it. Why you have to learn through the tree, uh, through the uh, uh, through the tree view? Because that in interview, if you go right, if they ask you, okay, I'll take some name. Uh, okay, Sadanan, what is the difference between the rebase uh, and uh, uh, anything like? What is the difference between a rebase and uh, merge actually? Or else, right? Or else, rebase with the cherry picker. So what he will do, no? What Sadhana will do that he will draw a diagram and he will explain about what's the rebase and the cherry pick. So through that way only the interviewer will understand. Okay, he knows the concept very well. That's the reason this tree view you have to do it in on paper, or else you have to open MS Paint and you have to do it. Did you understood? So now yes, what you now what you want now now you say that Rajesh when I do a git status when I do a git status still what happened right there's app.py is there I want to remove from the working area now working tree now so now what happened that you say that Rajesh I want to remove the app.py changes from working tree so for that guys what you have to do that you have to run a command by name restore git restore src app.py now you do a git status now you could see that nothing it means that you have removed it is it fine now as per the diagram if you go here now, if you see that from app.py, now what you're doing here, you have removed it completely. You have removed it completely. How do you remote, uh, remove it? With the help of a restore. Remote means you are removed it to the, you are literally removed to the bin actually. So this is how it is. Literally, you removed it actually. Recycle bin. You have literally removed it actually. So you have removed that file literally and you have sent to something like a recycle bin. You have removed it actually like this. Is it clear? So hyphen fn, so restore hyphen fn stage, it will go to unstage the file from the staging area to the working tree working tree and then like you have to just again do a git restore and give the complete path so that it will go and it will be get completely deleted so right this is nothing but your recycle bin right now one more thing actually uh Suppose somebody is asking different between git restore and git restore. Ah, I will come send up. Sandeep. Now that's the next thing. Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll come across. That's a very, very interesting thing. Okay. Okay. Now what I'll do. Uh, uh, say for example. Uh, I think I already opened it here. Uh, Uh, learning git okay where i'm okay i'm under the assume that i have mistakenly created many under the docs many uh, file i've created say for example i use a touch command docs under that i created some file one to hundred something mistakenly i did it like this right you go here uh why does not created man it has to create, right? So double dot. Uh, double dot. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut, 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 cut. Right. I will remove that. Delete it, actually. Yeah, you're right, actually. Ah, huh, single dot edit. Yeah, yeah. You have to do a double dot. See, here, so many files it creates under the docs. See, under docs, so many files it created. Do you think that now you will try to do? <laughs> 
same thing if you go over here now now if you do a git status now you could see that so many files it got created no all this do you think that for every file you are individually you're going to do a restore restore like git restore paste uh, docs uh, uh, one dot md like that two dot md it is a time consumer actually so what you have to do means actually you have to just run a command known as a git clean fd okay and then you have to give the path docs and say enter. See, everything it has removed it. Now, if you see here, see, it has removed everything. So it was there here, right? Now everything is good. Now, if you do a git status, see, nothing is there. Right? So git clean hyphen fd. This is the command you have to use it. Clean hyphen fd and give the path action. So uh, fd means forcibly delete it action. So what I do to that? Uh, to remove the app changes from the working tree, you have to run a command git restore uh, and give the command uh, with the path information, src app.py. Okay, this is fine. Now the next is that actually remove all the uh, untracked file. Remove all the untracked file from specific folder. Then what you have to do that, you have to just say git clean hyphen ft Space, give the path. In our case, we give the we have to give the path of docs actually, right? Because under the docs, all those files were there. Clear, guys? Did you understood till here? Yes, okay, sir. Good. Okay, I'm just thinking what to. Uh, till any other things, I'm just thinking now. Uh, okay. I think that much is pretty much. Yes, uh, we are moving to, uh, can we move directly to this uh, local repo, right? So, in between, we are using the staging area. Hmm. So, yeah, I will come across with that. I just, see, it is required actually. This is required. Why it is required, we will tell later. See, if there is no staging area, then there is you'll find a lot of issues actually, right? It is something like uh, you have to take a carton box and you have to just add the uh, books inside it. As per the analogy of what I gave in the, the last two session, right? So we need a staging area. Why we need it? What is the benefit of it? We will discuss in some time, after some time, or maybe in next session, we're going to discuss that, right? So these are the three phases and all these three phases are in your local system because I'm doing everything in my local laptop, right? This, all these three stages or three phases are in my local laptop only. So this is not but the local repository and you have a remote repository. Remote repository is something outside of your system. There is another system is there or something like a GitHub <coughs> a repo, a repository there where you can push the changes, right? So that and all we'll be seeing in some time later. In another one or two sessions, you will start that where you will be pushing your code from your system to some other server where we call it as a GitHub servers or where you will call it as an actual Git server where you'll be managing all these files changes, everything. Is it clear, guys? Now, what I will do that, uh, now you have restored, uh, now you have did the changes back. Now you remember that I, I in the app.py, I did all these changes, right? In the main.py, I did these changes, but in the app.py, I did the changes, but you could see that when I restored it back, all the changes were gone now, right? All the changes are gone now. Now, what I will do one thing, let me do one thing, let me try to uh, do some other, uh, few more the experiment will do. So let me do one thing, I will take the same file, app.py, and I will add some, something, I'll add some code. Uh, something. Okay. Uh, something. Um, I'm just trying. I want to add a code change. That's all. This. Okay. I'll do here, and then later I will go to this under the docs. There's a design image there, right? Let me go here. Let me add something here. Uh, something. Uh, anything can add, guys. There's nothing like that. Calculators. Uh, like uh, simple interest, compound interest, something. Right? Now, after you did the changes, go here. And now if you run, try to run a git status, you will see that these two files have been modified. One is an src app.py, other is a 
under a docs you have a design dot md do you agree with this so now what you are going to do now is that actually you are going to uh, do a git add of uh, src just you are trying to do an you just add uh, from this working tree to staging area only for this file actually okay git add src uh, app.py now if you do a git status now you could say one is in the one is under your green color which is not but in your staging area and other is in red color which is in your in your working tree now the question comes uh, guys i want to do i want to revert back all the changes whether that file is in a low is is in a working tree or is a staging area everything i have to revert it back completely so then in that case what happened you need to run a command now sir git reset hyphen f n how enter it has been reset back everything now if you do a git status everything looks clean right and if you go over here can you see here in design.md you have written something nothing is there in app.py you have written something nothing is there so it means that you have reset it completely by using git reset hyphen fn hard hardly you have reset it everything right right okay let us write down we have executed uh what is it git reset hyphen hyphen hard okay so there are total uh three options for reset resetting one is nothing but the hard the second is nothing but the mixed and the third is nothing but the soft you can just do a git reset hyphen fn hard git reset hyphen fn mix git reset hyphen fn soft these are the three options you have when you are trying to do a reset actually right so now what you will do that let me do one thing let me go and do the changes into the same file okay so i will go to my uh, app.py here uh i can add anything i'll just say i'll just add something like i'll just say ci continuous integration okay then i'll go to the design.md here i'll write cd continuous delivery come back here do a git reset a git uh, status now what is it guys can you see that these are the two changes are there right docs design.md and src app.py right right now you'll say that rajesh i'll just do one thing i'll just uh, i'll do a git add this time what i will do i'm going to add this docs design.mds okay let me add it so that i will push the changes in the staging area d s i g n m d now if i do a git status now you could see that one is in a staging area and other is in a working tree right now you will say that uh, rajesh i will let me do one thing let me try to run a git uh, reset hyphen fn soft let's see what it shows now we'll just say git status oh nothing is changed man even though if i did a git reset hyphen fn soft whatever the previous git status was there the same status i'm seeing oh this has not really affected anything okay fine this is okay now i'll do one thing now again i'll do a git reset hyphen fn mixed i'll give i'll give this option Oh, okay. Now it means that Rajesh, the file which was in a staging area, it has resetted back to the working tree. That's what you could see. That now, 
this docs design.md it has turned a red color it means that this file is under the working tree oh it means that mix is something like whatever might be it actually it is going to uh, restore back from the working tree from the staging area to the working tree and what are the file which was already there in the working tree nothing will do it will be under the same state okay something like that so what you are trying to understand now that actually there are three options are there along with the git reset one is a hard one is a soft hard we already saw everything it's going to revert back all the changes nothing will be there it is going to just do a cleanup activity git reset hyphen hyphen soft nothing was done we will see why that option that we will see it later and also the git reset hyphen hyphen mix it showed you some kind of a mixed reaction where you could see that actually the file which was there under the uh, under the staging area, it has reverted back or it has restored back to the working. So what we are going to do that, guys, this options and all, I will be discussing after two to three sessions. Not now. Why? Because that we will be covering up many other things uh, uh, in the kit. Once those things are completed, once I re revisit back to the git reset and go with all these options, then you'll be able to understand what exactly the meaning of the soft mixed uh, hard any of you know then you'll get to know about the soft and hyphen fn mixed option you'll get to know so i'll not be explaining now itself actually it will take around two to three session after two to three session you yourself will get an answer for this am i clear sir so what i will just write out here i will i will be discussing on when to use uh, event to use in next three days because I will be covering few more things after the third sessions we will see that actually we will be doing it actually right clear guys now what I will do that I can even go and run the git reset hyphen fn hard everything will be restored back right when I zero, do a git status you could see that everything is clean Right? Is it clear, guys? I think we are going to stop it today. I thought I'll be taking up to 11, but I think it will be too much for you because I have to explain many other things about what exactly master is all about. So I was just thinking that, okay, when you do a uh, git status, right? Uh, when you do a git status like this, uh, right? There is something as a master is there. Like right? here, you could see there's something like a master. I thought I'm going to discuss that, but let it be like we will be discussing in tomorrow's session. Am I clear, sir? Yes. Okay, guys. So did you did you understood today's session, guys? Yes, sir. I think was was it it was interesting or boring? It was interesting, sir. We learned few new things. Interesting. Okay, we are going to learn many other things, and uh, everything we are doing in our single standalone. Tomorrow, what I'll be doing in one or two sessions, what I'll be doing that I'll be creating two servers, one uh, both Ubuntu servers. One I'll be act making as a Git server, and other I'll be making as a Git client. Then we'll be playing around with all these things. Actually, then we have to do with the we'll be coming with the fourth uh, phase where what happened, right? We will be pushing the code changes from your Git client to the Git server. So all these days we are doing these three things, right? Here, what happened, right? We are doing a Git commit, Git add, uh, Git add, and Git commit. As per the diagram, which we are doing it at. Tomorrow, what we will do that, we'll have one more, we call it a remote repo like this. We have a remote repo. So what are the changes you do here from here that we have to push into the remote repo? So here, what happened? All those uh, commands, like a push, a pull, you know, like all those commands, what you will be doing? Uh, you will be coming out with a lot of commands, like that uh, uh, clone command, push command, pull command, fetch command, all such things will be coming across when you come across with this remote repository. Uh, sir, the remote repository is in the cloud, right? Or it's yeah. a server or a physical server? Physical server, sir. It could be your cloud, like you have a GitHub, right? Or else it could be in your local data center. You can have your, your server itself. That's what, what I'll be doing. That I'll be configuring one server as a Git server. Uh, in my AWS account, one will be a Git client. So I'll be playing along with that. 
tomorrow what happened right uh, i will try to do i what i will do that i will try to create a github account and then like what are the code gens which i'll be doing right from my local repo i'll be directly pushing to the github account so first let us learn how to have our own git server itself locally instead of depending upon the github let me have a local server no where i'll make that server as my git server then i'll be pushing all the changes from the local repo to my uh, remote repo where i have configured it right so ideally what happened that you need to have a git administrator who has to manage your uh, repo and everything oh, he has to manage all the server and all so what the company will do that okay let us have our own server as a git server where all the code push changes and all happen but this is very difficult very tedious task to manage all this so that's what happened company will go to the github account actually because github uh, you know the you know the licensing is very less actually so uh, all this is you are pushing to local repo man uh, our local uh, git server now i don't want to manage uh, let the github manage it actually so i will get rid of all those problems then what happened that you will have an account in a github uh, right then what happened that all those pushes and all by the developers they will be doing to the github account. you can have a github you can have a azure repo you can have a bitbucket anything you can have said even you know like the jfrog also has it actually the jfrog also has its own uh, repo actually the cloud repo actually right uh Sir, you said there are five phases uh, in that working yes. staging area: yes, local, yes. remote, yes. and what about fifth one? Fifth one, yeah, I'll, I'll be coming, sir. Don't worry, we'll all slowly be coming. I just sir. okay, sir. Okay, okay. I just curious. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Clear, guys. I think with this, you are now you are getting some base now, right? What exactly Git is all about. Then later, what happened? We will see internally, as I said, like we have to get inside the Git, how Git works exactly, right? So we need to understand about how exactly it is. That way, it's a it's like a content manager. That is one thing. How uh, Git manages its own file system and all. That is what the Linux Torvalds he designs it actually. Or just like a content tracker, Git is nothing but content tracker, and Git has has its own file system. right and how it stores everything like all those layer by layer we have to learn internally right? this is not an intro point of view in interview you will not ask all such things but what happen for your better understanding on the git actually you should even understand little bit of, of the internals of the git also intro nobody will ask sir how git internal works sir. what is a what is a what is a storage what's a file or storage block storage it uses right how it manage nobody is ask ask actually all such things but for us as we are learning we have to know it sir because all the uh, coming upcoming further concept right it depends upon how you understand a kit in a better way internally also clear guys so with that we are going to stop it now we will uh, continue tomorrow okay yes oh, sir uh, yeah uh, actually i have committed the change sir the deleting file so how to reset that Okay. Now you see what happened. Now, now we are playing or only around with this. What happened, right? We created for some files. We pushed to the staging area, and from staging area, we restored back all these things. Now we are saying that Rajesh, I took a file, all this staging area. I have pushed into the local repo. It means that you took a carton box, put all the all the books into that box, and now you sealed with the plastic and you put a label and you put a label means you have committed it. So now what is happening? Now the file has been in the uh, local repo now, right? Your commit has been local. Now this is little tedious task, but it can be done. You need to find out which is that commit, which is that file which you want to restore back, and and you need to do many other. You need to do a lot of things to make sure that you need to restore back. It means that you need to even uh, revert back the changes which has been done in the local repo. That is also part of our our uh, session. We'll be doing in some time, but that is little tedious task. It needs okay. a lot of things to be done actually, but it is possible. You can do it. Okay, sir. So okay. we are just doing till here. Beyond that, yeah, we will be doing that also. Okay. Yeah. Okay, guys. I think I am going to stop the. I will be stopping the recording. So let me stop the recording.